In this video, we'll look at some different time series and think about which features suggest a possible non-stationarity. So I'll get things set up here. This is using the FPP package that goes along with the, uh, the other textbook cited in our textbook. And it includes some different data sets uh, that we can look at. So the first one here, this is a plot of how much people spend eating out, roughly speaking, every month. And we can see there's a clear upward trend here, right? It goes from down here in 1985, and then it just sort of keeps going up and up and up. And there can be cases where, especially if you have a shorter series, you know, just by chance, it might happen to go up even if this, the series is stationary. Um, in this case, looking at the series itself combined with what we know it's measuring suggests that it's not a stationary series because there is an upward trend. Um, there's also some seasonality, but clearly the trend alone would make it non-stationary. Non -stationary. Here's another one. This is beer production in Australia. And in this case, uh, there also seems to be a trend in the first couple decades here, although after that, maybe less of a trend. Uh, regardless of the trend, though, there's some clear seasonality here. Uh, I believe the peak is in the fourth quarter of the year. You can see it if you look at the data. You can see every year there's a peak and then a trough, and then it just keeps going up, down, up, down, up, down within each calendar year. So that seasonality, uh, along with possibly a trend, makes it non-stationary. Uh, the next one is looking at electricity in the US. And again, um, you can see this clear seasonal variation here where uh, in this case, the peak is in, I think it's July and August when people are using lots of electricity to run air conditioners in most of the US. Um, and so within each calendar year, there's this up and down, up and down that's repeating. There's also a, it seems to be a pretty clear upward trend also over time. So both of those reasons make it non-stationary. Um, and you can see here, if you just look at the numbers themselves, um, August and, uh, is a lot bigger than September, October, November, December. And similarly, uh, July is bigger than June, which in turn is bigger than May, April, March, February, January. Um, didn't know there's sort of a secondary peak in January and December. I wasn't sure why though. Um, another one, if you look, I believe this is the uh, Saudi Arabia's oil production. Uh, this one's a little trickier to, to know what's going on. Um, it's possible that it's just very highly autocorrelated. And so when there's deviations, it tends to stay high, or if it goes down, it tends to stay down. Uh, it could be that there's some sort of cycle related to you know, the global economy or uh, the Saudi economy. Um, you, you could imagine maybe there's sort of an upward trend here, but um, again, this one's a little trickier to figure out just looking at it visually. 
Um, another one here, this is uh, personal consumption expenditure in the U.S. Um, and one thing, I'm going to add some horizontal lines on top of the data. You can see it seems like, uh, even though maybe the, er, sorry, this is uh, the growth in personal consumption expenditure. So one is 1%, 2%. Uh, so one thing you'll notice, it doesn't necessarily seem like the mean is changing. There doesn't seem to be you know, a big upward trend or downward trend. Um, it's hard to tell if there's really any seasonality, uh, but it does seem like the variance might be decreasing over time. So this is a little more subtle than the other types of non-stationarity. Uh, but if you look sort of in the second half of the data over here, uh, there is this one big negative uh, time period after the financial crisis, Great Recession. Other than that, most of the values are in between this top blue line and this bottom blue line, uh, sometimes well within that. Whereas if you look at the first half of the data, frequently there are uh, values that are either below, that are negative, or that are above. So here's below, then it goes above, then below, below again, above, above, below, below, above, below. So that seems to suggest maybe the variance has decreased over time. And so that would violate both strict stationarity and violate even covariance stationarity, which uh, would require that the variance is the same across time. Uh, finally, here's one last one. This is the growth again, so percentage, um, but for personal uh, disposable income in the U.S. Now for this one, at least visually, there's no obvious uh, indication that it's non-stationary. There doesn't seem to be a clear upward trend or downward trend. Uh, the variance doesn't seem to have changed a whole lot. There are a couple big spikes over here, um, but there's also a big negative spike here. Um, there doesn't seem to be any obvious seasonality. Uh, so here's an example where it's at least possible that it is uh, strictly stationary or covariance stationary. Um, there's one more looking at tourists in uh, Sydney, Australia, where you can again see this seasonal variation. And uh, if you look at the data, you can see in the Australian summer, uh, which is the opposite of our northern hemisphere summer, um, that tends to be where they get the most uh, visitors each year. Okay, so I hope that was interesting and helpful in trying to think about what stationary and non-stationary time series look like.